Today we're gonna compare this $350 amp to my favorite $2,500 amp. Is the Advanced Paris A10 Classic over seven times better than the Yamaha AS301? You might be surprised, so sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's find out together. I usually try not to listen to Red Hot Chili Peppers, but I listen to Red Hot Chili Peppers. The song, Scar Tissue, off of the Californication record, it just came on. I'm guilty of sometimes when I'm not actively listening, having a Red Hot Chili Peppers song come on in the background, and then catching myself tapping my foot to it, even though I despise the band. So I have both the Yamaha and the A10 Classic from Advance Paris in my rack right now. They are both hooked up to the Cambridge Audio CXN100 running Tidal Connect through my phone. Going out to the Sonus Faber Lumina 2s. So we have some higher end and very revealing $1,500 speakers. We have a higher end, very revealing $1,100 streamer. I'm comparing it two different ways. One, analog into both amps. So I'm trying not to listen to the DAC section of the amps. And then I'm going to run optical out of two different weems into both amplifiers, having the weems connected, playing the same thing at the same time, and then I have it going into a speaker switch. So the first 18 seconds is a little guitar intro. On the A10 Classic, I felt like 2100 hertz, which is where, where the top end of that guitar comes in, was a little bit more prominent on the A10 Classic, less clearly defined on the Yamaha AS301. When the vocals came in, again, a little bit recessed on the Yamaha AS301 versus the A10 Classic. At the one minute 20 second mark, there's a little bit of reverb. It felt a little bit unnatural on the AS301 versus the A10 Classic, but if I'm being honest, I'm having a hard time, if someone blind tested me, picking them out. Around the three minutes, 17 second point, there's a guitar solo. Hearing more air on the A10 Classic than I am on the AS301 from Yamaha. Not significantly more though. The God That Failed by Metallica off the Black Album remastered the remastered version. The first 20 seconds of that song is pretty much bass solo, and it's not happening super deep. It's around 150 to 200 hertz. I will say, though, that I heard a slight difference in the definition around the bass guitar. It was more clearly defined on the A10 Classic. Marginally, I was getting things set up and I was getting the real time analyzer out, and I'm just like bobbing my head. And it was on the Yamaha. I'm telling you, this Yamaha is really good. And I'm in the near field, so I'm only literally about three and a half feet away from each speaker. For me, that helps me hear the equipment better and not the room, so I don't have a bunch of reflections going on. Obviously, the A10 Classic has a lot more inputs, it's got HDMI ARC, maybe even eARC. Yamaha has five analog inputs. A10 Classic also has a lot more digital inputs too. But if you think about the AS301, kind of a stripped down version of the A10 Classic, that's probably a good way to think about it. No ARC on it. Both full-size components though. And incidentally, I'm running both of these flat. They both have loudness controls. Those loudness controls are turned off. The 30 second mark, the main guitar riff comes in with James Hadfield playing that part. A little bit heftier on the A10 Classic, but again, we're splitting hairs here. I'm talking about 3%, 5% heftier. Not a remarkable difference. And I'm in the near field. One more treble song and then we're going to switch over to the internal DAX. Okay, we're starting to hear some bigger differences now. I switched it over at the one minute four second mark and what sounded good with her voice and with the reverb all of a sudden really leveled up. So I think this is the place where the A10 Classic is starting to pull away from the AS301 from Yamaha. 
It's in the air and the reverb and a little bit of separation. I still heard a significant amount of separation with the 301 from Yamaha, but at this point, I think even if I pointed this out to a layman, a non-audiophile, they're gonna be like, yeah, I, I heard a difference here. Whereas the mid-range and the bass, a little bit a lot harder to separate these amps out. Top end, definitely. Lena Hall, Creep, incidentally, great song. If you haven't heard it, please check it out. It's a wonderful song. Also, the A10 Classic, I'm here in the room a little bit. So when she's not singing, there's a little bit. It's a um, more transparent background. It's not a quiet background. I'm actually hearing the recording where on the Yamaha AS301, I'm not, I'm not hearing that sound of like the air. It's not noise. I'm not hearing noise from the A10 Classic. I'm actually hearing whatever the mics were picking up during the recording. Very impressive, actually. So from using them just as an amp, same that going into both amps, I would say the biggest difference for me is the top end. Everything else, I think I'd be hard pressed to pick them out if I was blindfolded. I'm saying a lot about the AS301. A10 Classic, better. Much better on the top end. Everything else though, very close. Off to the internal decks. All right, a couple of things, and I was just actually setting these up. So both of these on the back, both these integrated amps on the back have a USB-A output. A10 Classic actually has two. So it has a one amp, five volt, one amp output. The Yamaha has a five volt, half amp output. So I'm actually powering both Weem Pros from the devices themselves. Now, personally for me, if I can get an amp or more out of a five volt power supply, I'm always choosing that one. But since the Yamaha only has one, I figured, why not? Let's just power the weems off of the devices themselves. One less thing to worry about. So as I was level matching these, and I level matched them by ear, I got them close enough for me right away. Out of the gate, the Yamaha using the internal DAC with the optical connection listening to Just Like Heaven by The Cure, way more sibilant. That's a sibilant song anyway, but man, there is a ton more sibilance on the Yamaha versus the A10 Classic. Wow, by Beck, really cool song. That is a song that you can hear a lot going on. So if you're wanting to test your system, check out Wow. Actually, there's a lot of bass at the beginning and it's bass that I thought was lower, but it's actually really not that low. So the main bass line comes in about 95 hertz, then drops down to only 75 hertz. But in my brain, I thought, oh, that's gotta be 30 hertz, but it's really not, it's 75 hertz. But it's funny because bass notes are always higher than I think they should be. And mid-range notes are always way lower than I think they should be. Because at the beginning there's Anyway, that's like at 600 hertz. I figured it would be like 1500 hertz. It's amazing. That's why you should get out a real time analyzer to check out what's going on with your music. Because it tells you a lot about not only the SPL, the sound level, but also what's going on at what frequencies. Frequencies. Differences between these amps running their internal decks on WoW. <sighs> Not that much, actually. Cleaner, more instrument separation. That's pretty much always the case, right? If you have a really good product and you're comparing it to another really good product in a different price category, almost always it's the instrument separation. The one place where I really heard a difference was out of the left speaker throughout the song, there's a tick, 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 tick. It was there when I was listening to the Yamaha, but when I switched it over to the A10 Classic, I'm like, oh, okay, that's there. And then when you switch it back after you've heard it, then you can hear it on the other product. So that little tick tick, a lot more on display with the A10 Classic. Tells me cleaner, lower noise floor, better separation, maybe better channel separation on the A10 Classic. But again, fairly marginal. Narcissistic Cannibal by Korn. Okay, we're having another separation time. So the biggest thing that I heard on the Yamaha just kind of a wall of sound. It just felt like everything was 
same line with the A10 Classic. Then we have Jonathan coming forward. Jonathan Davis. We're not on first name basis. I wish we were, but we're not. Anyway, he came forward. Instruments clearly defined behind him. There's a lot of electronic music going on too. Starting to see better placement in space with the A10 Classic. Sounds good on the Yamaha, but, but man, I can really hear a difference when I put the uh, A10 Classic on. Is that enough? I think that's enough. What are my final thoughts? Yamaha is better than I remembered it being because the A10 Classic has really become my reference integrated amplifier. The A10 Classic has a Sabre 9018 DAC chip in it, which is an older DAC, so it's not like a super high-end DAC, but I think it sounds great. Couldn't really find what the internal DAC on the AS301 is. A little bit more sibilant, if not a lot more sibilant on the Yamaha compared to the A10 Classic. A10 Classic is better, especially on the top end better with instrument separation, but those differences are diminished if you're using an external digital to analog converter. And if you would add something like the SU-1 from SMSL for an external DAC, you're really gonna level it up. And at that point, it may be a lot harder to tell the Yamaha, the $350 Yamaha from the $2,500 A10 Classic. The thing the A10 Classic has is style and it has better sonics. Is the price differential equal to the level of sonic improvement you get? Probably not, seven times the cost, but you don't get seven times the improvement. For me, at this point in my journey, and if you have the budget, the A10 Classic is an improvement on every level, maybe not a huge improvement on every level, but the top end, the DAC, the clarity, the instrument separation, better on the A10 Classic. But the Yamaha is gonna get most people to where they need to be. I think if you're just starting your journey, you have around $400, $350 to get started. The AS301 is gonna be money well spent. There's a pretty big power differential between these two as well. The Yamaha is rated at 60 watts where the A10 Classic is rated at 130 watts. So basically the A10 has twice the power. At my listing levels, I didn't hear marked improvement simply because the A10 Classic has more power over the Yamaha. If I had to put a percentage standpoint on how much better the A10 Classic is from the base standpoint, I don't know, 5%. Mid-range standpoint, probably 15%. Top-in standpoint, 50%. Instrument separation, 50% to 75%. However, if you don't have speakers that are resolving enough, that delta is a lot smaller. Both of these are fantastic products. Both of these are not leaving my house because the Yamaha continues to prove just how good it is at its cost. If you wanna get the most out of it though, you're gonna to need to put an external DAC on it, you're gonna to need to put an external phono preamp on it. But it's a remarkable product for $350. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had a ton of fun doing it. If you're not subscribed, and I know 40% of you watching aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It's really easy. It's right down at the bottom of the video. Just hit it. You can always unsubscribe later. And if you don't watch me, I'm not going to show up in your feed anyway. If you want to support the channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee down at the bottom of the video. There's a thanks button. I'll also link these in the description, the A10 Classic and the Yamaha AS301. The Yamaha will be an affiliate link, which means if you click and you buy, I get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more though. So it's a great way to support the channel. You can also check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap body, man. We have a really cool community over there. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen, maybe through your new Yamaha AS301 or your new Advanced Paris A10 Classic and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the cheap audio man.